Okay, everybody, welcome to another quick tutorial. This one should be pretty easy for anybody that's interested in this kind of thing. I am going to show you how to make water displace. If you look at the animation here, you can see the water is moving. And uh, that sort of helped sell the effect that I was going for, that uh, essentially I'd been joking around and it rained so much that a pond formed. And of course, all this foliage is here uh, growing in the arena with the horses. So let's go into Blender and um, we're just in a default scene here. If you don't know what Blender is, you're brand new to this. Blender is a free 3D program that I highly encourage anybody to learn, even if you don't have much of a use for it. It is a fantastic program. So we're gonna take this cube that's in the middle here and we're just going to select it with the mouse, hit X and delete. We don't need it. Um, we're going to make just a simple plane. So we hit Shift A and uh, it brings up this menu. So shift A brings up this menu, mesh, plane. So this gives us a flat plane in the middle of our scene. And uh, what we want to do is we want to tab into this. So we hit the tab key and that'll take us into editing mode. And uh, we're just going to scale this thing up a little ways by pressing S. If you press S, it goes into scale mode. All right, like that. And then we're going to right click, subdivide, and then down in the little subdivide thing here, we're going to hit 40. Actually, just so let's go with 20 first, and I'll show you uh, what can happen. All right, so tab out of that, hit tab, and go back into object mode. You can see up in the top left here, it says object mode or edit mode or whatever mode. We only use the two. We're in object mode. So with this selected, we're going to go over to a panel over here, and this little wrench thing says modifier. Super easy. Head over to Deform List, and inside of there is Displace. Now, when you add this, it does absolutely nothing. There's no change whatsoever. We can look around. I'm using my mouse to do this. I'm holding the middle mouse button and just sort of moving my mouse around. You can see nothing has happened. We want to deform this thing. So we want to deform it in a way that makes it look like uh, water. You know, when we, when, we, when we move around, that water is supposed to look like it's a little bit windy. And uh, so let's uh, let's add what we're going to do is we're going to add a little texture here, hit new, and this goes into, uh, this is a texture. So there's no texture in here at the moment. We have to go to the texture tab. So we can click this little button over here or we can head down to here. They both go to the same thing, right? So we've applied a texture, but there's just nothing in here. So we're going to click this little thing, little list here, and it says uh, image or movie, hit clouds, and as soon as we do clouds, you can see that it automatically starts to deform this mesh. We can turn that on and off too. Like this, this doesn't have to be on. We can uh, just do this and it goes back to being a normal plane. Uh, with it on, uh, we can still see if we hit the play button, nothing is happening. There's no action going on. But first we have to fix this. It doesn't look much like water at the moment. So we're going to right click, hit shade smooth. So that will smooth things over a little bit. And then the next thing we need to do is add a texture of water. Now I have a, an add-on here, and this allows me to search for uh, water uh, over on Blender Kit. And uh, I'm just gonna use this lily pad one, and it's gonna just, you just drag it on here and go straight onto there, and it loads in. And if we go over to a different view, we can see that we've got these lily pads, but look at how gigantic they are. That just won't do. It's just it's a very small patch of, of water that we're looking at at this moment. So let's open up a window so we can get our shader editor, and that just goes up into this corner somewhere. The mouse turns into crosshairs, and then you can open up this new window to do some more stuff. We're gonna change over to shader editor. And inside shader editor, this texture is set up to have a mapping. And inside of the mapping, we're just going to make this, we're going to actually drag down so we can get all of them at the same time, just hit five. And now we've got a much larger pond. That's not bad. Um, it is pretty bumpy still. So we're going to have to fix that next. And the reason this is so bumpy, if we go into, uh, if we just go into normal looking at it mode, uh, up here is the way you can go to wireframe, and then the next one is viewport shading, and then the next one is a viewport shading with uh, with uh, the objects displayed with their textures, which is essentially uh, the most used, in my opinion. And then the last one is what it's actually going to look like depending on the render engine that you're using. 
Anyhow, so we can see this is quite blocky, a lot of points that are sticking up. And the reason that is, is we just don't have enough geometry for this particular texture. So what we can do is we can actually go back into the texture tab, making sure your object is selected. And we can see that if we just change the scale a little bit, we can modify how big or how wide these waves are. So if we really bring this way up, and because it is a small body of water, so we can bring that up to say two. And if we go back into our modifier and we can see in our strength, we can bring this down to 0.1. And that gives very little distortion to it. We'll actually bring this up maybe just a touch, 0.5 or something like that. You can see that it's just undulating a tiny bit. You see that there. Now, the other thing that we can do to make this a little more detailed is go back into our object and hit A for all of the all of the vertices and faces and polygons, and we can right click again, hit subdivide, and we'll make it even more dense. So I'm just going to go for a five. So that's going to be really, really dense set of material to. Uh, to displace. So hit tab, come out of that, and we can see that we've got a little bit more detail in here. This is really starting to show itself. Um, I'd almost say that I think we have just a little bit too much strength to that, so we're just going to 0.3, and that'll calm it down a little bit. So now that we've got some displacement going on, um, there's no animation yet, so we're going to add animation. So the next thing to do is to animate how this displaces. And the best way to do that is actually to move this texture. And we can see the coordinates right now are set to local or global. We can do object or UV. So we're going to do object. Now it wants an object to pay attention to. So we're going to hit Shift A, and we're going to go into get an empty. And you can use any empty in here. I personally like to use spheres. I think that they're really obvious and clear. And I'm just going to move this. Let's move it on the axis of the red, which is the x-axis. And you hit G to move. So you select it, hit G, X, and it will move only on the X. So I'm just going to put it on this side over here. And we're going to be on the first keyframe down in our timeline at the bottom here. And we'll hit I. And it will insert a keyframe for animation. We'll insert location. And we'll head all the way over to, say, 200. And we'll grab our object again, X. Maybe go over to here, hit I again, location. And what that's going to what it, that's going to do is move. You can see that as we scroll through this timeline, it's moving that sphere. Isn't that cool? So we got that moving. And now we want to key or we want to track that with our texture. So we'll hit our plane again, figure out, it says coordinates, which object do we want the coordinates to abide by? Go to that and then uh, go to the uh, sphere. And then as you go through the timeline, we'll see that move and the water moves as well. Right? So we'll just come out of that a little bit and uh, hit play. And you'll see. I want to get rid of that sphere because it's kind of distracting. Just hide that. And there you go. Undulating water. It's that easy. You can obviously, you know, mess with that, whether you wanted that to be a bigger body of water, a smaller body of water, tiny little waves, big waves, all kinds of stuff. And that is how you displace a plane with a water texture on it and uh, um, make it look like, like water. Exactly how I did it. It's pretty much exactly how I did it here. And, uh, and then I added a whole bunch of foliage around the edges and then tracked it into the shot, all that kind of business. So, But it made it, it sold the shot a little bit better. So there you go. That's that for this tutorial. I'll see you guys in the next one.